Where did this come from? I've been donated this for in exchange for a video featuring it. Oh. oh. They originally wanted an ad, like a like a paid promotion, but I was like, as it happens, my next waterline video is going to be around 3D printed impellers. So if you guys want, I can instead basically rather than doing like an ad insert in another video, do the entire video featuring the 3D printer, but do it as a review. Okay. So that it'll be an honest review. Like if the, if the printer sucks, I'll just say it sucks. But I did ask some mates and they were like, um, no, it's actually a fairly reasonable printer. So nice. But either way, I uh, Get a have a 3D printer 3D now. Fucking 3D printer. Is this now the most expensive thing in our house? Yes. Great. 3D printer. Woo! And then... <laughs> I'll do the... The magic. The magic later. Try to push it through, you know, you and, and your filament is not perfectly straight. You know, it will definitely jam or like hit something, and it will not go through, and you'll have to jiggle it. And um, what does what does that bit do? So this one senses when you run out of filament. Oh. You know, so you don't uh, lose your print. It will go and park itself, and will wait until you uh, put a fresh filament in. And this is the actual painting head. It has the extruder and everything uh, inside, uh, and the motor that actually drives it through the extruder. Ah, it hits up pretty well. You know, it's uh, 130 degrees already. Yeah, it's pretty in the bed. It's going to go to 60 degrees. Oh, sweet. You know how to know where, when it is 60 degrees? No. 60 degrees is about the limit at which you can hold your hand on a hot surface. <laughs> So I don't need to use hairspray or anything because it's a preheated bed? Uh, no, no, that's a preheated bed and it's uh, coated uh, with a special uh, material. Uh, if it doesn't stick well, what you may need to do, you may need to take a very, very fine sandpaper and just, you know, do a few passes just to create, you know, these scratches. As nice bit quiet. It's very quiet. Apart from the fan. That's all right, it's quiet on my laptop. I hope it's not a Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same thing as like mining cryptocurrency while we print. The rule of anyone who starts working with the printer is that you, know, you have to watch your thirst in probably about five or six DD pins. <laughs> like, watch it. Yeah. After some time, you get. Uh, uh, you know, chill about it and like, just let it go, and, and it happens there in the background. But for the first fight, you have to watch it. This one seems pretty, pretty spot on, though. Yeah. There's been anything even vaguely resembling an error, yeah. even with that bridging. Um, they had plenty of time to uh, work out all the quotes, and uh, even my version. Uh, Reversions back, prints all right, you know, with, with the ticks. And they introduced and they put all of the uh, changes that I've uh, put on mine, you know, they are already in the printer. Such as? Such as the belt on the top, you know, which makes it you know, quite a lot easier and more precise in that direction. The better cooling for the uh, nozzle. Uh, and uh, this rail here. It's wide, not narrow, you know, so it actually has quite a lot more base mechanically to hold the whole thing in place and, uh, you know, to increase the rigidity of the table, you see. Mm -hmm. 
trying to lift it up and down and it's not moving at all and there is no artifacts on the printer. No. You know, the first printers in I had the wheel and dirty clothes and they were very, very narrow and it's, uh, yeah, the big bag was a problem. So on this one, yeah, it's all fine. Plus. Oh, there you go, sweet. <laughs> the next step is the most satisfying. You do this. Oh, oh fancy. And then you let it cool. And then you do that. Yeah, we don't officially endorse Bitcoin on this <laughs> channel. Let's endorse. <laughs> yeah, Ender. Let's endorse Ender. Isn't that just magnets or frictions or magnets. statics? Magnets. Great. And we go to just normal print point two, maybe even well, point two should be fine. Yeah, and here's your levels. Perimeters, three perimeters looks good to me. Uh, infill, I usually, for structural models, I prefer about 25 to 40%. Let's put it at 25%. Bleed is fine, everything is fine. Um, skirt, three millimeters are right. Support material. And then you go into plotter. And you press slice now. And it's going through the process of slicing. Once complete, you know, that is what you have. And on this slider here, you're gonna just this stuff. Right. You can see, you know, how it is going to do that. Yeah, this will be a decent print. It will take 13 hours to print. Oh, so here we put the uh, runner for the uh, habit turbine on print. Everything is fine, everything works out of the box, you know, these are very minimal adjustments. And um, I personally like my printers to be a project, but uh, that's not for everyone, and this is definitely a project, it just does the job, you know, you don't need to have a specialist knowledge to use it. Um, the installation on computer was pretty simple and quick, the settings worked up, like, you know, pretty much straight away, and so uh, voila, you know. It is, it's uh, printing the turbine. And I definitely like the robustness of the uh, aluminium frame. You know, it's, you know, there are many other printers that uh, are you know, significantly less robust. And so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's a good one, you know. The other thing is, it's, it's silent, it's nice, you know, you can actually have it in your room. It would be interesting to see the uh, uh, power usage. It's, you know, we <laughs> live in a time of uh, energy crisis and, uh, you know, cost of living crisis. Stars out of 10? Uh, I have solid 8. So 100 watts when it's not printing and just sort of... But it's going to be about the auto same level when it's printing, that. yeah. No, it's going to, you know, hit uh, 200 degrees or something and the temperature and uh, the, the power will go up. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay, 140. So it's about 40, 40 watt nozzle. So 100 for the printer itself, and then mm. 40, 50. I would say that you know it's 100 for the printer because the bed is heated. Yeah, you know, it's like heating of the bed. You know, consumes the muscle bit power. As you see, like it reached the power. Now it is cooling down 80 watt. Yeah. So now that's whole process printing. I'm quite certain, you know, if you would uh, have it in a warmer room, it would consume less. It so, is kind of cold in here, yeah. Yeah, you know, once once you have it there, in your warm room, it will be, you know, probably 20 watts less. I mean, our warm room is not much warmer than this room. It's uh, got the boiler and a skylight, but it's still winter in Scotland. Mm. But 100 watts is fine. So if this print is going to take 12 hours, then yeah. that's... 1.2 kilowatt hours, something like that. Which is yeah. what does electricity cost now? About 50p. Okay, so well, like I mean, 1.2 about 40p. You you also use about 15% uh, of uh, filament, and uh, a spool of filament is uh, roughly 15 pounds. So you used uh, two pounds 20 on a filament, mm -hmm. roughly, and. Uh, Forty p for electricity, so it's uh, roughly 
three quid. Six pounds, three quid. That's, that's not bad. Also, like I will optimize this design for printing, mm. um, so that it uses less support material and um, is a bit quicker and more efficient. Great, awesome. Happy with that.